the King Henry VIII may have died from syphilis, the awful and deserved consequence of an adulterous and promiscuous lifestyle. Henry VIII, most notorious for having six wives, was one of the most savage and cruel rulers of England. Axemen and swordsmen would carry out the gory tasks of taking the heads of their wives, and two of these men lost their heads inside the Tower of London. However, Henry put a great deal of weight on and he would become exceedingly obese. Welcome back to History Rediscovered. In this video, we discuss opening the coffin and burial vault of King Henry VIII, furthermore we discuss his cause of death. Henry VIII was constrained by wounds from a jousting mishap that altered his character. The monarch had been brutally knocked off his horse when he was 30 years old, and ever since then, his moods had been wildly fluctuating. This was in line with some of his friend's executions, whom he would later denounce and then regret later. But in 1547, Henry VIII became ill early in the year, and he would succumb to this inside of his chambers in the Palace of Whitehall. Henry VIII was an exceptionally fit and active young man. He may have had smallpox, perhaps around 1514, and he may perhaps have had malaria, perhaps the first attack in around 1511, but until his early 40s he enjoyed good health. From about the age of 45, in 1537, he became corpulent and suffered from sore legs. He died on the 28th of January, 1547 aged 55. During the last 10 years or so of his life, Henry underwent a very marked deterioration in health and character. His features became heavy and gross. He developed enormous corpulence, and towards the end he could not walk or stand, and had to be carried about in a sort of sedan chair. He suffered swollen legs and pain, gaining temporary relief from pus discharges. He had an ulcerous leg, the ulcer deepening and spreading. He was bereft of speech, black in the face, and in great danger, letters and papers, 1538. He suffered from headaches and fever, he had fits of anger and temper, he was cruel. His mental faculties declined, though he enjoyed periods of remission, lucid periods, and he continued to conduct affairs of state almost to the end, receiving ambassadors and making political and military decisions in his customary shrewd and intelligent manner. He was still sexually active, marrying Catherine Howard in 1540 and Catherine Parr in 1543. Conventional wisdom is that Henry VIII died of syphilis, the awful, undeserved, consequence of an adulterous and promiscuous lifestyle. A number of possibilities exist for the cause of his death, the simplest explanation is likely the correct one, he was obese, suffered from repeated and severe infections in his leg, and the medications he consumed contained poisons which added up over a lifetime of use. His body simply wore out from the abuse. However, Henry VIII, following his death, would be buried in a very small vault, which is not in keeping with his reputation and legacy. Today he still remains in this burial vault despite his wishes being different. However, the vault of Henry VIII would be broken into a number of times, and with this, the most infamous king of England was disturbed. On the 28th of January, King Henry VIII died, and his death was one that was rather peaceful. He was attended to by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, and in the end, the king slipped away, and he did acknowledge in his life that he had sinned a great deal, but following his death, the king's body was washed inside of his chambers after it was left a few days before his demise was announced to the parliament. With this, Edward VI was made king, but Henry VIII's heart and vital organs were removed, and these, it's believed, were then placed in lead caskets or vessels, which were buried in places separate from where his body was laid to rest. After this Henry's body was bathed, embalmed with spices and encased in lead. It laid in state in the presence chamber of Whitehall surrounded by burning tapers for a few days and was then moved to the chapel. On February 14th, the body began its journey from London to Windsor. The procession was four miles long. An elaborate, tall hearse bore the coffin as it rumbled along the road. On top of the hearse was a lifelike wax effigy dressed in crimson velvet with miniver lining and velvet shoes. There was a black satin cap set with precious stones, which was covered with a crown. The effigy was adorned with jewels, and the gloved hands had rings. 
The remain spent the night in Sion Abbey and the next day arrived at Windsor. Sixteen members of the Yeoman of the Guard bore the coffin into the black draped chapel. It was lowered into the vault in the choir. Stephen Gardner, Bishop of Winchester spoke the eulogy and celebrated the Requiem Mass as Catherine Parr, the Dowager Queen, observed the ceremony from Catherine of Aragon's Oriel window. After the Mass, as the trumpet sounded, the chief officers of the king's household broke their staves of office and threw them into the vault, signaling the end of their service. The king had left money for daily masses to be said for his soul until the end of the world. But the Protestant rulers of Edward VI government stopped the masses after a year. King Henry, in his will, left instructions for a magnificent tomb to be built. As early as 1518 Henry VIII stated in his will to his servants and family that he wanted to be buried with his third wife, Jane Seymour, who had died following giving birth to King Edward VI. Jane's demise inside of Hampton Court was very sad, and she never made it out of the place alive as she became sick in the days following giving birth to the heir. But Jane's death changed history forever, as despite giving the king everything he wanted, if she had recovered, it's unlikely Henry would have had more wives. But her body, minus the heart, which had been buried in Hampton Court's chapel, was taken to St. George's Chapel and was buried in a vault under the floor of the choir showing her importance. But Henry decided that he wanted to be placed to begin within this vault before he wanted to be moved to a much larger and grander tomb which would be placed inside of Westminster Abbey, alongside his father and mother's tomb. The tomb of Henry VIII was planned for many decades before he died, and he wanted this to be a large ornamental tomb which would be bigger and grander than his mother and father's. Henry VIII and Elizabeth of York specifically it would be a quarter bigger, and Italian sculptors try to work on this and Henry VIII did argue with them over the tomb's design. However, the king died before the tomb would be finished, and because of this, it was never completed as his children would not invest a huge sum of money to finish it. Though his children had been instructed to complete their father's grand tomb in St. George's Chapel, none of them did so and what parts of the tomb did exist were sold during the civil war to raise funds for the royal family. Because of this, the king's dreams of being buried inside a grand memorial would never occur. The coffin of Henry VIII after his death and embalming was then taken on a huge procession from Wall Palace to Windsor Castle. The procession was four miles long, and roads had to be widened to allow it to pass by. The hearse carried the coffin of the king, which was pulled by horses who had been draped in black cloth, but on the coffin was a wax effigy of Henry, covered in jewels and his clothes. This was for many people who witnessed the procession, the first time they had seen an image of their king and what he looked like, and the crown was also placed on the coffin. The funeral procession moved towards Sion Abbey, and it was then rested for the evening to have a break. And there have been rumours in the past centuries that while it was here, the king's body exploded and that parts of Henry dripped out of the coffin, and then this was licked at by dogs. This may have been caused by the gases building up in the body after death, and this is known to occur. But after the evening, the journey continued on to the burial site, and the coffin of Henry VIII reached Windsor, and it was then carried into the church by sixteen men of the guard such was the weight of Henry the Wright's coffin. A funeral service then occurred, and his coffin was then lowered into the vault where it still remains, 500 years on, his officers of the household broke their staves of office and threw these into the vault after the coffin, but the burial vault would throughout the centuries be disturbed a number of times today, there is no pomp or ceremony regarding the king's burial site, and it's just a simple marble slab. Showing where Henry VI is buried, it says that in a vault beneath this marble slab are deposited the remains of Jane Seymour, Queen of King Henry VII, 1537, King Henry VII, 1547, King Charles I, 1648, and an infant child of Queen Anne. This memorial was placed here by command of King William IV in 1837. But Henry VIII was disturbed a number of times, mostly to bury the others inside the vault with him, and he would be buried next to someone who he would consider his greatest enemy. The most important person inside the burial vault after Henry VIII is King Charles I, who was placed next to Henry's coffin. King Charles was a steward, and Henry VIII, during his reign, would bar the Stuarts from ever becoming the kings of England, but after his daughter, Elizabeth I, 
had no children. Or as the Stuarts became also the rulers of England but Charles I is remembered in history for being one of the most brutal and shocking kings who threw his country into civil war. The English Civil War is known as the bloodiest conflict ever fought in England but Charles I would be placed on trial after the defeat and he would then be condemned to death before his head was taken off on Whitehall by an executioner. But because of the foro regarding Charles I and the hostility towards this action, Parliament tried to make sure that they buried Charles I first in a quiet place, especially because they were worried that royalists would dig him up and venerate him as a martyr. Because of this Charles I was quietly buried in Henry VIII's vault and the vault of Henry VIII was actually rather full with just Henry and his wife Jane in there. When it came to marrying Charles to get his coffin in, workers had to move Henry's to the side and it's believed they may have actually damaged this and undamaged some of the wood of the Tudor king's coffin but also another steward would be added to this vault and that was one child, Queen Anne, the last Stuart monarch, who was buried at the feet of Henry VIII in a small coffin. This meant that to lay the enemies of the Tudor monarch in the vault, the vault was broken into. But then again in 1813, the vault would be broken into yet again as building work was being carried out inside of St. George's Chapel and the Rouval Vault. In 1813, Henry's vault was rediscovered. Sir Henry Halford wrote an account of the discovery, which is described as an accident caused by excavating under the floor in order to prepare a mausoleum for the current king. They peered at Henry through the holes in his coffin, but Charles was the one who stirred the most curiosity at the time. They opened his coffin, which was identified with a lead nameplate, removed the king's head to confirm it was really him and not an imposter's body as some rumors had it, and took some souvenirs. The people of that age were always delightfully gaulish. In 1888, the vault was opened again to return the relics and a sketch was made of the interior. The builders entered the vault, containing the remains of Henry VIII, but then officials went further and opened the coffin of King Charles I to see what was inside of it. The Prince Regent, the future George IV, also oversaw this, but they noticed that Henry's coffin was in a bad state and had been broken. The tray it had been sat on was broken and had collapsed, and this was done when Charles's coffin was squeezed in. Charles is on the left. The infant's coffin is still at the foot of it. The square box near the center contains the relics, which were, if I remember correctly, a vertebrae and a tooth. Henry is in the center, and you can see how damaged his coffin is, with only shreds of wood remaining on the top. What remains is the lead sheets that were wrapped around his body after embalming. Jane Seymour's coffin is completely intact on the right. The pressure from within the body of Henry was also said to have splined the wood, and the top of the coffin had allegedly split open, but there was no record of any work being done to move Henry into another coffin, which was more suitable, meaning his body may be exposed to the air still today. However, Henry VIII was one of the most notorious and evil kings that had ever ruled England, but he was buried in a quiet place where he did not want to remain forever. He still lies under the floor of the chapel in Windsor, and not in the great tomb that he wanted, but surely his reputation means he deserves a grander monument and tomb than he currently has, as if you visit Windsor today it is very easy to walk past his burial vault. Thank you for watching.